So I, I'm not going to lie. I, I feel kind of buried in work right now. I've got a lot of long-term projects I'm trying to get taken care of, some major video editing that I'm trying to do, I'm trying to finish the edit on the audio book of my novel because I really want to get that out as soon as possible. And I want to get all that done without cutting back on any of the stuff that I normally do. So this video, I, I feel like I need to do something simpler and not as complicated and just take things a little bit easier. So we're going to be talking about auteur theory, what it is, what people have problems with about it, and dissecting the discussions both correct and incorrect around it. I feel I may have made an error. So, uh... Random note, a little bit into this video, I'm going to suddenly change outfits uh, because um, something went really weird with my memory card and the video file corrupted. I got to keep a lot of it, but not the front end of explaining what the heck it is I'm doing here. So, auteur theory is something that relates to the collaborative artistic projects, primarily film even though it has in time since been applied to other mediums. I'd say video games is where I see the term come up more often. You don't see it as much in something like theater or television because those are often viewed more as writer-focused mediums, whereas film is specifically a director-focused medium, or at least that's what auteur theory says. So here's the short version of what auteur theory is, and then I'll talk about some of the discourse I hear around it that really drives me up the wall, and then we'll actually start to pull it apart. The short version of what auteur theory is, it states that the director of a film is the person with the most creative control and the loudest creative voice because they are the ones who are directing the whole project and it is their vision that everyone else's work is in service of. And they are therefore generally for analysis purposes under auteur theory considered to be the author of the finished work. So that's the theory in a nutshell. Here's what kind of annoys me because like this... <laughs> Weirdly, this has come up in like a handful of podcasts that I've been listening to lately from people who like I respect and they've like, I've seen some of them rail against auteur theory and they seem to fundamentally not understand what it actually is. There's this weird straw man version of auteur theory that I actually see and hear a fair number of people like rail against, except what they're arguing is not what it is. So let me deal with that first off, because that's kind of what kicked this whole thing off. What auteur theory is not is a theory that states nobody matters except the director. Because a lot of time when I hear people rail against the idea of auteur theory, and let's be clear, there are some problems with the application of auteur theory. We'll get to those later. But what I see people rail against is they're like, oh, nobody else made a difference. None of all these other people's work matters, all of it matters, auteur theory is elitist, and it disregards the work of other people. And no, no it doesn't. It attributes primary guidance to a single person, but it does not actually say nobody else matters. And I think part of the confusion is honestly just a quirk of language, because auteur is related to the word author, and when we think author, we tend to think of books. And books and novels and things of that nature are a medium in which one person is pretty much solely responsible, even though that's a little bit of a collaborative medium as well, because you have editors who come in and try and make the book the best that it's going to possibly be. You have everything from layout, line editors, you have the publishers involved, you, heck, the person who designs the cover. There are other people involved, but it is generally agreed and appreciated that when you look at a book, there's this one person's name in big, bold letters under or sometimes over the title. That's the author. And when people rail against auteur theory, the sense I get is that they're trying to apply that image of an author and think that auteur theory is saying that's what they are. Like, everything about this basically comes down to them and the other people don't matter. That's not what auteur theory is. So what is auteur theory actually? Let's drill into it a little bit. Because as I said, it doesn't disregard anyone else's work. 
What it says is that the director of a film is the person going to be most responsible for the shape and form of the final product. A director's vision, a director's interpretation of the script and their leading of the overall team towards a single cohesive final artistic product is going to have the most determination on the end result. In other words, if you were to change the director but leave everything else in place, every actor, same script, same crew, same everything, but change the director, you will still most likely end up with two very different films because the directors come in with different visions. Conversely, if you keep the director but swap out anybody else, whether it be makeup artist, set direction, script editor, lighting designer, key grip, even a lead actor, while things will be slightly different, not identical, it will still take the same overall shape. It will still be, for the most part, the same final product and will not deviate anywhere near as much as if you were to change out the director. It doesn't mean no one else's contributions matter. It just means that the final result is more the product of the director strictly creatively, not logistically. Obviously, a director isn't doing everything themselves, but it the final product takes the shape that it does because of the director. Maybe it would be illustrative for me to name some notable auteur directors, people who bring very specific, very clear visions thematic preferences, or just an overall tone and feel to their work that makes them immediately identifiable by their directing style choices and vision. So this would be people like Alfred Hitchcock, Stanley Kubrick, Zack Snyder, Christopher Nolan, Quentin Tarantino, Guillermo del Toro. These are people who, once you are familiar with their work, you could see a movie directed by them and probably realize they were the ones who directed it, even if no one told you in advance. They have very clear preferences, notions, ways of presenting, framing things, and vision that they bring to the works they make. Now, not every director is an auteur director. The uh, other side of the coin there is what is charitably usually called a journeyman director, someone who while they are certainly competent and can make good or even great films, they don't bring a unique authorial voice to it. Because there are, frankly, some directors who you could swap out with another director who is also a journeyman director and you would end up with effectively the same product. So while auteur theory says that the director is the primary creative force of a film, it does not mean that every director is an auteur. It simply means that the position of director has that potential if an auteur is in that position. So not only is there the aspect of journeyman directors, or if you're looking at an unskilled and uh, just bad version of someone who doesn't have a particularly unique vision, that's where you get a hack. But even aside from that, we also live in a world at this point where other forces may have more control than the director in a specific thing. The director might not have final cut, in which case it might actually be some studio head that could be said to shape it more than anyone else. There are situations where films are produced by one of the lead actors, and that actor actually has more influence over the overall direction of the thing because they also carry a producer credit than whoever the director is. I would argue that that's been the case for the last handful of Mission Impossible movies. But the big thing to keep in mind here is that while the director holds potentially the most creative influence that doesn't invalidate anyone else's contributions. It doesn't mean the uh, director could have done it without anybody else's help. It doesn't say they did it all on their own. It just says that they steered the ship. The ship is fully crewed and you need that full crew, but the captain is the one deciding where that goes. The director is the captain. So that is what auteur theory actually is and why that argument that I tend to hear against it seems to come to a fundamental misunderstanding of what auteur theory actually is. So now that we've talked about what auteur theory is, what's wrong with it? Because I do actually think there are some very legitimate discussions to be had about problems with auteur theory, at least in practice, if not to the theory itself. But they don't seem to be happening because people get hung up on a misunderstanding of what the theory even is. 
So now that we hopefully have a shared understanding of what it actually is, what's the problem? Well, this largely comes down to, for lack of a better way to put it, people buying into their own hype. As a strictly creative theory element, in terms of academic analysis and study of films and filmmakers, auteur theory on itself is just a framing through which to view a film, or possibly some other forms of collaborative art. But when put in practice, when brought into the common lexicon, when it gets into somebody's head that they are an auteur, or when a studio believes that the director at the helm of their film is an auteur, that is where a lot of some of the most toxic, harmful, and deplorable actions on movie sets tend to root from. Most stories that you've heard of terrible film shoots or of directors who have mistreated their stars, their crew, or anybody like that, the vast majority of the time, it comes from directors who either are considered by people broadly to be auteurs or who clearly consider themselves to be an auteur. And actually, it's worth pointing out at this point that being an auteur does not actually make you good at what you do. Uwe Boll is an auteur. He has a very distinct style and vision and approach to his films. And it is very clear that they would have looked very different in the hands of any other director. They're not good, but they are uniquely his. He is an auteur. Being an auteur doesn't make you good at what you do. It doesn't make the end product good. It just means it would have been different under somebody else. And if you want the most current relevant example, I think that would probably be Joss Whedon who I'm not thrilled to have to talk about again, did a whole friggin' thing on him not too long ago, but he is a person who has a very clear voice and style. Some might argue that it's more as a writer than as a director, as a crafter of visuals, but since he writes his own scripts, he is, as a writer-director, actually an even more controlled than just a director would be. And he certainly has writing styles and quirks and visions and things that are fairly unique to his approach to things. That's, I think, pretty undeniable. And I think it's pretty clear that he seemed to have considered himself an auteur, but more importantly, he was treated as one by studios who would be alerted to his treatment of people underneath him on his TV shows and then later on his films, ultimately blowing up on the set of the reshoots of Justice League. And the studios would protect and shield him. And I think part of the reason they do that is because auteur theory has become so embedded in the creative process, especially in Hollywood, that the studios, if they think they have a good auteur director, unless they think that person has completely derailed the project, they will keep them in place and protect them because the studio thinks that the auteur director is the least replaceable person. And there are definitely directors who think that about themselves. And that goes way, way back. I cited Joss Whedon as a modern example, but this is not new. Kubrick was not a good person to work for. He would take literally a hundred takes of the exact same shot, nearly identical every time because it wasn't precisely what he wanted. And it was allowed and excused because he was seen as an auteur visionary. I would argue he was a jackass who was wasting everybody's time and money. And if you want to take a specific example, I will never be okay with anyone who ever makes the argument that how he treated Shelley Duvall on the set of The Shining was okay. Because he emotionally and psychologically abused her deliberately because he thought it would get a better performance out of her. He put his art as being more important than her personal, mental, and even physical health. 
And no. No. Even if you like that movie, I don't. I f***ing hate that movie. But even if you like it, don't ever defend how he treated her anywhere near me. Because I will jump down your throat. And not in a fun way. But not to dwell on Kubrick for too long, uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Amazing director. The father of entire genres of film. Masterful films. Like, films that I love. Oh my god, was he a horrible, stuck-up creep of a human being. And it was allowed because... Well, he's Alfred Hitchcock. He's going to get us this amazing movie at the end. Let him do whatever his process is. Because he's the one we need to get this to end up as the film we want. And there's plenty of other examples all over the place. Now, it's worth pointing out, and I think actually emphasizing, not all auteurs are like this. I mentioned Zack Snyder in my list of auteurs, and I do definitely think the man is auteur. And he's also a man who makes very few films that I enjoy. I dislike most of his movies. But you know what? Everything I've ever heard or read about him and his onset behavior is that he's an absolute delightful person to work with. People really like working with him. That includes actors, cinematographers, people on set, the crew. He's a nice guy by every measure I can possibly find. Regardless of what you think of his films, regardless of what you think his personal politics are, he runs a professional and pleasant set with a nice working environment. So I don't want you to think that all auteurs are terrible people. But at the heart of most disasters of film, both artistically and in terms of how people were treated on set, there is almost always an auteur with an ego at the heart of it. And that's where I kind of want to cycle into video games. So the thing about the video game industry is, the industry as a whole doesn't really put up with auteurs. They don't like them because the video game industry has become as massively, monumentally, staggeringly successful as it has by standardizing things, by having standard practices, having systems, using algorithms to figure out what drives engagement and what gets people to spend money in the micropayment shop. So an auteur is potentially a wrench into that. If someone has a unique creative vision for a video game, how do we know they're going to put all the things the algorithm and the spreadsheet says should be there? So you would think there wouldn't be a lot of auteurs in video games. But there are. If you follow video games, if you know video games, you know names like Ken Levine, John Romero, Shigeru Miyamoto, Suda51, Swery, Toby Fox, Jonathan Blow. And if you know these names, you might have noticed that I started to go into indie video game makers towards the end because, well, yeah, it's something that is more tolerated within the indie sphere. But, and this was the other thing that got me thinking about this and wanting to talk about it, folks should know at this point that the video game industry as a whole has a lot of deeply rooted problems. Again, something I've talked about before. And while those problems are probably most embedded and most prevalent in what is known as the AAA video game development, i.e. the very big budget, very high-end, realistic looking graphics, fully rendered, huge games, it is really across the industry. And there have been news items in the last few weeks about a lot of indie creators, a lot of indie studios who are small enough to have individuals at the head of them who are treated like auteurs and who are protected regardless of how they treat their employees. And that, I think, is what has been the actual damage of auteur theory is in the behavior of A, the people who believe themselves to be auteurs, and that being the primary creative author of a work gives them priority as a human being over those around them. 
and two, the studios and corporate entities who reinforce that by behavior, if not statement. Because when I was explaining auteur theory earlier, I said that you could theoretically replace anyone who isn't the director, and you'll still have largely the same product at the end. And while I said that because that's how the theory works, and I do think there is some amount of truth in that, to take that on board too much means that the auteur and the studio supporting them do actually start to treat people as disposable, as replaceable, not as people. And that is the damage of auteur theory. Not because the theory itself is bad or even inaccurate. I largely agree with it, especially when it comes to a medium like film. But the prevalence of it, the way that it has shaped the behavior of not only directors, but the people who have the ability to hold those directors accountable and choose not to because they think they're protecting an auteur. Yeah, that, that's a problem. And that's a conversation worth having. Definitely much more so than this idea of, well, auteur theory says nobody else matters. No, it doesn't. Have the actual conversation, not that nonsense. Because that's not what's going on. That's not what the theory says, and that's not the problem. So there you have it. My rambles on auteur theory. What do you think about all this? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon's how I'm able to pay the bills and uh, try and get all the other stuff that I'm trying to get done, done. Because <laughs> I definitely wouldn't be doing, uh, I'd say, uh, two-thirds of what I do. Uh, if I had to hold down a day job. So that is immensely helpful. Even if you can't support me there, like, share, subscribe also help me out. But don't worry about it too much. What I really want you to remember is that you are beautiful, you're valid, and you are loved. You're the council. I'm just running the meetings. I don't think I consider myself a YouTube auteur. But regardless, until next time, this council is adjourned. And credits, I gotta shout out my top Patreon supporters, so thank you very much to Zubin Lutfula, Barack, Oliver B, Melinda Walters, Leotha Boy, TT, Renobulax the Poodle, Eidolon, Tracy Scrabbit, Vincent Paul Bartolucci, Angry Caspero, Adam Lefty Taylor, Shane Ross, Robin Moore, Shayla Gourlay, and Brendan LaRose. Couldn't do it without you.